In that light, let's take a look now at summer weather. Overall, we see in the top left-hand corner here, <coughs> oops, there we go, sorry about that. Um, <coughs> we see this chart in the top left-hand side is an accumulation of the various models forecasting the ENSO cycle. That would be the El Nino-La Nina cycle. If we then look at this June, July, August line here and get about midpoint, it suggests that we should be in a weak El Nino. El Ni a weak El Nino would be a 0.5 to a 1.0 degree positive aberration at Celsius in sea surface temperatures in the Nino 3.4 area of the Equatorial Pacific. We did think at one point that it would be more of a weak to moderate strength El Nino. Now the sense is that it's going to be more of a neutral to weak. And if you look down then at the lower left-hand chart in the June-July period, we see what is this, about 64% odds now will be in an El Nino, uh, about 35 to 36% odds that will be in a neutral phase. Uh, during the June, July, August time period. Since we're in a relatively weak El Nino phase, that means that other factors, but it's not a dominant driver of the weather. Other factors can be at play as well. And so we look at what those other factors are, and one of them is this area of the northern Pacific, and right now it is kind of on a little bit on the cool side. So we'll watch that. Another, and, and down here, this is the ENSO area, the uh, ENSO 3.4 area, or Nino 3.4 area. That's a little above warm temperatures, above normal temperatures. And then the other area is this area, and we're starting to storm here, so a little bit of a distraction is the as a strong storm moves here into the Kansas City area. Uh, we have some real warm temperatures off the west coast and specifically off of the Baja of California. So when we see these weak El Nino conditions, and, and first of all, let me say that our partners at Commodity Weather Group have indicated as they've looked back all the years in 1950, they don't find a single year that is identical to this one in the setup. But they do find a number of years that have a lot of similarities. And so that's what we'll take a look at is those years of similarities. But while that makes a challenge for forecasting, they probably one of the overriding factors you find is that you, when you have warm waters off the Baja of California, it's extremely rare to see a hot, dry summer in the Midwest. And when you have those warm waters off the Baja of California, you almost always have more mild, wetter conditions in the Midwest that favor above trend yields. So will the water stay warm? Right now the model suggests that they will stay warm. We don't see any indications of that changing. So let's take a look then. The other factor is this strong jet stream, Pacific jet stream coming in, bringing moisture into the Midwest, over the mountains of the Midwest. Now, back in 1988 and 2012, we had a strong jet as well, but the makeup of sea surface temperatures in the Pacific was different, such that it caused more buckling in that jet stream, allowing a, a high pressure ridge, a dome of doom to form over the Midwest. This year, we have these more warm temperatures over most areas of the Pacific. Let me go back. I got a little anxious there with my clicker. There we go. And so we are, forecasters do not expect as much buckling of the jet stream, maybe a little bit over the eastern Midwest, but a very active jet stream. Why is that significant? When you put all these factors into play, that makes 1993 one of the analog years of significance. Forecasters currently do not expect the same intensity of jet stream and therefore the same intensity of Midwest rains as we had in 1993, but they do see some risk in it. 